Okay. Look, at Black and Your Chaser, your blackness is safe here. It doesn't matter. Everything is safe here. No thank problem. You. Okay, so thank you so much for your time. I'm very excited to get into this conversation. The main reason why I'm excited about this conversation is being from Mississippi and the poor health concerns that they have with all types of maternity issues. I already know that this conversation is going to be very instrumental for them as well as inspiring because it's it's just important for us to see us in these roles of pushing forward for better health things, especially when it comes down to pregnancies within our community. So before we get started, I'm going to ask you the first question that we ask everyone as soon as they come on our platform is when you hear the words black with no chaser, what comes to mind? Immediately, I think of just all black, everything, your most blackly black self, like without having to um, tone down, without having to adjust, without having, having to adapt, you can just really be yourself without feeling um, you're too black or yes. without feeling that um, mm -hmm. you have to, again, tone it down for whoever it is you're talking to. You know, a lot of times we as black people have to, like I said, adapt. So <laughs> in certain environments, you know, we can't speak a certain way. In, in front of certain people, we can't dress a certain way. Our hair can't be a certain way. We want to conform to making other people comfortable. Um, when Black with No Chaser means this is who I am. This is what's going on right now. This is where I am. Um, and I'm going to unapologetically be me no matter what. You're spot on. You're spot on. I don't even have to go any further. That's exactly <laughs> what we are. Like, we love to have these interviews because we want people to know that you deserve to be able to come to the platform and be authentically you. You shouldn't have to think about, oh, man, this statement might be a little bit too black. Or you shouldn't think about, oh, this shirt that I have on may be too pro back. Like, it doesn't matter because we are who we are and we are built to be this way we are built to be an unfiltered people and i Absolutely. think that that's what that's what the, the that's what's wrong with the world right now is they want to censor us so much and we created black with no chaser so that we could be able to be like yo it is what it is and we're going to embrace what it is we're going to learn from it we're going to grow from it and we're going to keep it moving because we appreciate what we are as a culture and it's necessary absolutely so congratulations. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you so much. So congratulations on your wedding, a COVID-19 <laughs> wedding. How was that? Um, it was great. It's actually perfect. I had a friend who texted me after we got married who sent me a what? screenshot of a conversation her and I had maybe like five years ago. And I was saying, girl, I don't want no big wedding. I'm just going to be <sighs> my husband. We're going to go to the courthouse and that's going to be it. And five years later. <laughs> you spoke it into existence. Went to the courthouse. It was, you know, um, outside of like the financial stuff, you know, as far as as it relates to a wedding, I think the opportunity to just be us. Like, don't get me wrong, our parents were on Zoom. It was just our parents. We didn't, we didn't even invite our siblings on the Zoom. It was just our parents and us and her. And I think that that was the best way ever to get married because again, we could just be us. It was just us, you know? We did it our way, um, when we wanted to do it, without, you know, telling everybody. And then once it happened, it was like, okay, this is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we we actually did it in our apartment building. So it was like, oh, that's beautiful. Came downstairs. We just came downstairs, ordered some good food, some barbecue. And we actually exchanged our vows together and just us. Um, we didn't even do it during the ceremony. Um, we did like the normal vows and then we said our own vows to each other directly. Um, so it was... And I think one thing that everyone keeps saying is, if you can get married during a global pandemic, you can make it through anything. Here to stay, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but what I can appreciate about the way that you guys, the route that you guys took is the intimacy of it all. Um, mm -hmm. I am married. I got married three years ago, and my wife and I always constantly discuss how we 
dislike our wedding because of all of the moving pieces. And we really wish that it was just more about us and the people that were close to us instead of all of the hoopla. So I, yeah. I appreciate yeah. hearing that. And then the double end of it is being in a pandemic. I just think that, yeah, y'all are definitely here to stay. And I'm very happy for you guys. Beautiful couple. Beautiful Thank baby you. as well. Thank, Thank you. So powerful Black woman, you started that on Clubhouse. And as we all know, Clubhouse is the newest thrill that we are all into. But yeah. how in the world did you get such a quick following? Because that is, it's amazing. Um, so... Originally, my husband and I were going to start like a parenting group because we got on pretty early. When I got on Clubhouse, it was only 15,000 people on the app. Oh, wow. For real. <laughs> it was only 15,000 people on the app. So that made it even more like a... Thanks, Dad. Um, <laughs> that made it even cooler because it's like, okay, there's nobody on here. If this goes Exclusive. well, you know, it might take off. So I was like, let's start a parenting group. Like we're cool parents and we go through parenting things. And we did like a room. No one came in the room. <laughs> <laughs> we were literally like, oh, talking God. to each other. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, you know, it was almost like a trial and error. So I was like, mm, I don't think that's it. So when in the process to create a club was even you had easier. had to wait to get approved, right? Yeah, but because again, it was so new, I was emailing Clubhouse like weekly and I would get correspondence because it wasn't as many people on the app. So they were, you know, it was a lot quicker. There weren't a lot of rules to it. Um, and so I was, it was like six o'clock in the morning. I was like, well, what's the good name of like a woman's group? Um, and powerful black woman. I was like, that's everybody it. wants to be a powerful black woman. <laughs> That's it. Everybody like, you know, you got me so <laughs> why not um and as black women we do so many different things and i think a lot of times spotlighted wise it's a lot of entertainment at the forefront you know um especially on social media apps influencers at the forefront you know mm -hmm. being seen as at the forefront but i was like powerful black women are doctors lawyers everywhere orthodontists, um babysitters like every single woman Black woman is a powerful Black woman in her own right. So this is a safe space for Black women to just come and talk about not necessarily trendy topics, but things that like we're going through and would matter to us. Um, so one of our first like big talks that we did was in January of this year. So I started the club in I think November-ish, but I didn't have like my big first clubhouse talk until January. And it was on how to have a healthy vagina. Um, I thought that was important topic. Important. <laughs> Very. I think, you, I think you can get the latest gossip, the latest trends on other social media platforms, but this was an opportunity for women to hear from a GYN directly um, with why we should be taking care of our vaginas. And I know that just like me, other women have questions. Right. Um, as we get older, different things start to happen. After we wow. give birth, different things start to happen. So why not invite someone in that can help us with this? And it was amazing. We had women, young women from, you know, 18 or whatever the age limit is to 45, 50 years old That's asking amazing. the doctor questions about things that, and we weren't embarrassed. Again, it was a safe space. So safe. it was like- That's listen, so important. I want us as women to be informed about what's going on, especially if we don't feel comfortable. I had had so many conversations with women about not feeling comfortable at the GYN or their doctor made them feel uncomfortable. And here was a black woman who had no problem answering any question you know, um, correctly though, you know, she couldn't give medical advice because she's not their doctor. So because right. the questions, you know, pretty general, but they, it was still deep enough to be able to get something from it. Um, so those are the type of conversations that I wanted to have with women. You know, um, we had a wellness, spiritual, physical, and mental conversation. Oh, that's so dope. Um, in February, uh, featuring Elise Fox of Sad Girls Club. Like, that's a huge 
a mental health organization for women. So to be able to have women come in and kind of unpack. And again, a lot of times we focus on mental health now. It's either mental or physical. You know, we always want to stay in shape. What about the spiritual? (laughs) But what about the spiritual, you know? So these are the types of conversations that I wanted to have versus, you know, I'm not against the Bitcoin and (laughs) all the investment conversations, but things that in the long run will be beneficial to us. It it will. I mean, we have to recognize all of the stigmas that we have been falling victim to all of these years. I mean, I have to admit, I fell for a stigma. I mean, I didn't understand that you could actually heal the inside of your body with natural things. And, you know, I listen. I listened Vegetable to my doctor water. and I went on and got a hysterectomy and I had no business doing so. And, you know, things like what you are doing right now is important because we didn't have certain outlets like this for us to feel comfortable enough to even ask questions, ask for suggestions on what we need to be doing with our diets or just how we could better treat our body and learn our vagina. And I think that it's important now in 2021 that we have finally come to a place of comfort. I was watching um, Mary to Medicine this last this last Sunday and I the doctor, <laughs> I love it. So Dr. Jackie, um, she was asked a question and the woman called her. She was like, you're the vagina doctor. She was like, so what like what insight can you give us from people since you've released your book about the vagina and everything. And Dr. Jackie was like, um, I learned, the biggest thing that I've learned is that we as women are so uncomfortable with talking about these things. And yes. it, it kind of shocked me. I didn't I didn't understand. I kind of felt like with coming from Dr. Jackie that people would be like, oh, it's Dr. Jackie. Like, let's just talk about anything. But she was just like, no, like we are very, very uncomfortable. And I'm excited to see us embrace it because we are the women of this earth. Like we are birthing. We're constantly birthing. Yeah. Like it's necessary. Yes. It's yes. necessary. So we need yes. to talk about these things. If yes. we're uncomfortable about it, you need to make sure that you get with somebody that's going to make it a comfortable conversation because you're not supposed to feel uncomfortable. It's yours. You know, you need to know everything that's going on on the inside of your body. And I just, I just want to commend you for even creating this space because you Thank started you wanting to do it as a couple's thing but then you know obviously the spirits guided you into knowing that this was something that we needed especially as black women so I just don't want to go any further without saying thank you thank you so much for that now dear little black girls let's get into it what inspired that (laughs) um so I was writing a letter to myself um about things that I Not that I didn't know as a child or growing up, but things that I didn't understand. Um, I think financial wealth, my mom was trying. I'm not even going to front. She was trying to teach me. She bought me like a fake checkbook when I was like (sighs) seven or eight years old. And, you know, would have me write out these checks all the time. (laughs) That is so Um, cute. (laughs) Yeah, so it's like, but me, and I think we do it as children, we don't want to listen to our parents until we get older, you know? And so it's things that I wish I really would have paid attention to, but also things with, that I was told. So um, my dad, I was not allowed to wear makeup and I was not allowed to perm my hair. I was not allowed to wear red, you know, red fingernail polish, red lipstick, or only pinks and things of that nature. But, you know, as I got older, especially in adulthood, I didn't realize how amazing he was for that because <laughs> I went through, you know, the severe acne stage. So, but I couldn't wear makeup. And so it taught me at a very early age to just embrace me wow. and myself at its 100% natural self. And so with Dear Little Black Girl, these are just things that I wish I would have paid attention to or, or things that were told to me that I felt especially in this day and age with social media being so influential on not only adult lives, but children, like 
Yes. Kids have Instagram now. Kids have Facebook. Kids right. Because when we were kids, we were outside. We didn't have devices to distract us. One, we were outside. And two, there were parental control settings. Yes. So we couldn't just, you know, ex- our explore page would be controlled versus today. Anything that's trending, the kids are going to see it because of the algorithm, you know? So, um, I just wrote these affirmations to myself. That's what it started as. And um, I had a friend who turned out to be the editor of the book and she was like, this, and it literally the first line was dear little black girl. And then I just went into the affirmations and she was like, you should write dear little black girl before every single affirmation. So we did that. And I was like, this is a book. Like this is a children's book. I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know what, but I was not in the plan, but wow. A children's book so um i started working with an artist and it was going great i was like feeling the momentum like this is gonna be a thing and um it didn't work out with the artist by like, creative differences so i kind of just like all right write that off um and then i found out i was pregnant with my daughter in 2019 early 2019 so i had wrote this book off in 2017 two wow later you're having a girl and I was like so you're a manifester <laughs> <laughs> obviously a and I was like you know what I need to finish this book because I'm gonna have a little black girl and I want to be able to tell her these things I want her to grow up and understand these things um save and keep your piggy bank full that's not just a a kid affirmation that is an adult affirmation yes um you know knowing your history and respecting our ancestors that's you know knowing I love talking to my grandmother now you know and finding out the different stories I think as children not that we don't care but we're in our own world you know we're growing up we just want to be but as an adult I want to know who I am where I came from so if I can get my daughter interested in knowing who she is at an early age she'll be a lot better off than yes indeed so that really it's like the inspiration was the letter to myself, but then finding out that my first child was going to be a girl, I was like, you know what, this is for her. Um, and we, I found a, well, I connected with an artist collective and I was like, I'm looking for a children's author. And she connects me to this young girl, Anna, Anna Latisse. She is, at the time she was 22 years old when we started working on Dear Little Black Girl. And I was like, you're 22. <laughs> <laughs> what (laughs) in college I think she's probably in her last semester now and I was like this is perfect um she's like that she's someone who I would want my daughter to look up to you know she's the generation after me but the one before my daughter yes this is someone who's about her artistry she's about her work she's in college she's an entrepreneur like this is phenomenal like yes take all my coins sis <laughs> take all my coins. for real because this is you are someone that i would want my daughter to be like mommy i saw this or that i read so about beautiful. this woman and you know so that kind of thing and um this year we released it this year so i mean it was a journey it was a five four or five year journey um but it's a testament to holding on to dreams and not yes. giving up on them, even when the timing isn't right. Um, God knows when the timing is right. And That's right. I think a lot of times, naturally, we think we know. Oh, you know, if I do this in this amount of time, it's because I did that. I did that. But mm-hmm. it's actually the alignment. It's all God. Yes. It's all God and alignment, you know. So um, that was Dear Little Black Girl. And now my daughter loves Dear Little Black Girl. Um, she picks it up literally almost every day. Um, I know that I warms your soul. Oh, oh, that's that's a different, that's a when different affirmation started, right there. When she first started joining it, I was like, maybe this is just her book for the day, right? And then about four weeks straight, every day, she would go get the book and bring it to me. 
and I, you know, and in her way, tell me to read it. And we would read it, and I would watch her just look at the picture, and she be her eyes be so bright. I just called chills. I just called chills. I swear. <laughs> and I'm like, this is yes, it's for every dear little black girl across the world, but this this is for her. And to see her just light up, I'm like. Thank you, God. <laughs> That's amazing. That is a testament in itself. And you already know, like, probably maybe 10 years from now, she's going to be like, yes, my mom wrote this book. And it was my favorite book as a child. And it's still my favorite book because it's necessary. That was, the, that was another thing, having a tangible legacy, something that wasn't just on the internet, but something that she could yeah. hold and see and be like, this is my mother. And when she opens it, it's dedicated to her, you know? So I want her to have all those bragging rights that, you know, this book is dedicated to me. You know, when she's in elementary school and she takes my book to show and tell, like, yes. this is my name. This is my mom. This is know? my legacy. <laughs> this is my mom. I love so it. That was definitely, when I see her holding, I'm like, this is a part of not just my legacy, but hers absolutely goodness 25 minutes has gone by so fast it feels like i've only been talking to you for three or four minutes well since i'm at the end of the time what do you want to leave the audience with from little dear little black girl and just from powerful black women because you have a lot of power going on as all black women do but what do you want the audience to leave with um, just what I said with earlier, just because a dream doesn't come true when you want it to, doesn't mean that it won't manifest. Mm -hmm. So to continue to work towards that, um, not being afraid to fail, but it's not really failure. It's, it's not. just a setback. You know, it's just a setback. Not being afraid of those setbacks and continue to be the strong, powerful Black people that we are. We are the most creative people in the world nobody the does world. it like us nobody does it like us so being black with no chaser you know the world is always watching us so continue yes. to be yourself unapologetically continue to create um and just be strong i mean i know it's hard in the times that we're in but um i think us as people are going to come out on the right side of this um so yeah, that's, that's I totally agree. I totally agree. Thank you so much for your time. Thank we you, appreciate Sita. you here at yes. Black with No Chaser. Anything that you need from us, whether it's just amplifying or just, you know, collaboration, whatever, anything you need from us, we are always here and we are supporting you all the way through. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sika. Thank you. <laughs> Have a great day. You too. You too.